So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything that you need to know to get started as an aspiring stock investor. We are going to talk about that today coming up next. So if you're an expiring stock investor, it's very important for you to understand the basics before you get started because I don't want you to jump into markets just like that on day one because you're going to get killed. So first thing first, I'm going to cover some of the basic terms that a lot of stock investors use. And if you're already a forex trader, you probably already know some of the terms that is also used in the stock market. And then we'll go through some of the type of stocks that you can consider investing into and then four ways that you can get into the stock market that you can participate in the stock market and two very common ways that you can make money from the stock market and also two very important things that you need to learn before you start so some of the basic terms used by stock investor the first one is of course you need to know this now what is a stock when you buy a stock it's not just a symbol that you see on the internet in your charts you're literally buying a business so when you buy stocks they always say that they're buying shares from a company think that when you buy shares from a company let's say apple you're owning a part of apple hence the name shares in other words when a company earns profit they'll give you a share of profits and here's the thing when you buy a share of the company it gives you a couple of rights the first thing first is voting rights meaning that you can participate in their agm and then participate in the voting of the management team that runs the whole entire company so if you bought 100 shares and your friend bought 1000 shares your friend would unfortunately have more power than you because here's the thing the more shares you buy the more power you would have as a shareholder so you can't just buy any share of any company because you can buy shares of company that are publicly traded meaning that they are listed in the stock exchange as compared to private companies you can't own a portion of the company unless you go to the CEO and then you sign a formal agreement as for publicly traded companies you can just go to the stock market and then buy some shares through a broker that's it so what does this mean? It means that when you want to buy a share in a company, you need to act as if you are the business owner. If you're the CEO of the company, would you be excited about this business? That tells you whether you should buy a share of the company or not. Of course, the other thing that you might be familiar with is if you go long in the stock market or when you go short. What does it mean when you go long? It means that you're making a buy. What does it mean when you're shorting market? It means that you are short selling the market. Now, as a beginner investor, I don't recommend going to short selling first. These are reserved for more experienced investors, okay? As an aspiring and beginner investor, just go for the long. And the other thing that you need to familiarize yourself with is this thing called ticker symbol. Or some people call it stock ticker. or stock symbol okay basically they mean the same thing what does it mean by ticker symbol stock symbol it's basically a two to four capital letter word that represents the stock simple as that for example if you trade forex okay instead of writing the currency as euro dollar it is represented as eur usd okay so same for stocks if you watch netflix a lot okay let me give you a very familiar company netflix the ticker symbol for netflix nflx so when you go to yahoo finance when you go to your stock platform key in nflx then netflix stock chart would appear on your platform another example amazon okay ticker symbol is am Z and amazing. So same thing when you key this into your stock trading platform, you see the Amazon stock charts. And of course, there are many important terms that you need to know. What's the P ratio? What's the return on equity? What's the current ratio? All of that is reserved for next few videos. So stay tuned for it. But these are the basic ones you need to get started with first. So when it comes to the type of stocks, it can be classified in many ways. The first one is how big it is. The second one is which industry or sector they are operating in. Third way to classify it is the nature of the business. Fourth way to classify it is based on their voting rights. So the most common way of classifying stocks is market capitalization. 
In short, market cap. So the more common ones would be small caps. And then you have mid caps. And then you have large cap stocks. If you want to classify it further, then you would have your mini cap. Some people call it micro caps. Then there's another all the way to the top. You know the Google, the Apple, or the big companies, mega caps, okay? So small caps typically, they would have a market cap of less than $1 billion. Alright, whereas for mid cap, would range from $1 to $10 billion. Large caps definitely would be more than $10 billion. Mega caps would have more than $50 billion, whereas for mini caps, less than $250 million. So if you're researching a company, how do you know whether it's small cap, mid cap, large cap? For example, you go to Yahoo Finance, they'll show you what's the market cap of this company. So that you don't have to calculate manually yourself. But if you do want to calculate it manually yourself, calculated by number of outstanding shares times the current market price. Okay, and this is how you get your market cap. So why is it so important to understand the market cap of the company that you're researching in is because based on your risk appetite and your financial goals, it's going to determine whether you should invest in those small caps or large caps. Now, if you're an aggressive type of investor, okay, or you're looking to achieve your financial goals in the short term, you want to withdraw that money in the next few years rather than wait for retirement for you to withdraw that money, meaning that you have shorter term financial goals, then it's better for you to invest into because here's the thing, small caps, even though they are smaller as compared to large caps, they offer more potential for growth. Whereas for large cap companies, they are already established companies, they have been in the industry for a long time, the room for growth is not as much as compared to smaller companies. So that's the good news, small caps offer you higher growth potential, but then it is more risky as compared to large cap stocks because in the event when there's a financial turmoil, small caps will be burnt more severely as compared to large caps. So that's why if you are a more conservative investor or your financial goals is to invest for retirement, meaning your goals are more long term or you are still at the beginner stage, then it is better for you to pick the more stable stocks, which is large cap stocks. Another way in which stocks can be classified is it's based on the sector that they're in and also based on the industry that you're in. Now, as a start, it's very important for you to invest into sectors or industries in which you understand. So based on experience, if you invest in the stocks within the aviation industry, nothing against aeroplanes, but it's just that their business model is more complex. And trust me, I've done research on aviation industry stocks. If I were to start all over again, I wouldn't have done that. I would have picked easier stocks. And probably because I don't really understand the aviation industry. And also the other type of industry that is more complex to understand is the financial industry. For example, banks. But with that said, if your whole entire family comes from the financial industry, you understand it from inside out, then there's no harm investing to it. So the other way in which stocks can be classified is... Cyclical stocks and also cyclical stocks. Now, if you've been in the markets for some time, you already know that markets go through ups and downs. Okay, there's an economic boom, there's a recession, and companies perform differently based on the market conditions. The types of companies that's affected by economic conditions the most are cyclical companies, as the name suggests. It goes through many different cycles. In other words, if there's an economic recession, people wouldn't spend money in the companies that are situated in these industries. For example, if there's a recession, people will spend less on luxury, people will spend less on travel, spa companies. This is debatable, okay? Whereas for circular companies, their performance is pretty stable regardless of whether there's a recession, regardless of whether there's an economic boom. Because why? These are your necessities. In other words, utility companies and healthcare and also your daily products which is your consumer necessities. 
regardless of whether it's a recession, regardless of whether the economy is doing well, you still need to use head and shoulder shampoo. When there's a major recession, you don't need your Versace, you don't need your Gucci. So another way in which stocks can be classified is the first one. You hear this a lot, common stocks. What are common stocks all about? Then the second one is your preferred stocks. Now there are pros and cons of each type of stocks. When you buy common stocks, you will be given voting rights. Okay? That's the good news for common stockholders. Whereas for preferred stocks, they don't usually give you voting rights. Okay? But the good news is, in the event that your company goes bankrupt, you would be given priority when it comes to your dividend payments. So they give the dividends to you first before they decide whether they should give it to common stockholders. In other words, dividends for common stockholders is normally not guaranteed. Okay, not guaranteed. So in other words, you invest in the common stocks when your focus is mainly on capital gains. And you invest in the preferred stocks if your main focus is only dividends. So there are four main ways in which you can participate into the stock market. The first way, you might be familiar if you're on this channel, which is you can trade stocks. In other words, your time horizon would be less than one year. You wouldn't be like Warren Buffett, hope for a couple of years, hope for many, many years. You go in and out. In other words, you speculate. There's no right or wrong whether it's better to trade, it's better to invest. It all comes down to your financial goals. Just that for me, I don't trade stocks, okay? Another way to participate in the stock market is to do what Warren Buffett does, Buffett not buffet, okay? Value investing. In other words, buy companies that are below its intrinsic value. What's intrinsic value? So sorry, I forgot to talk about that just now. When you buy a stock, let's say at $150, okay? But you calculated that the intrinsic value is at $250. When you bought at this price, you're actually buying at a discount. Okay, so it's like going to a shopping center. The LV bag normally it sells for $1,500. But on Black Friday, you go to the shop again, and then you see that the LV bag is selling for $550. You're buying at a discount, same thing. In other words, the intrinsic value, intrinsic value, okay, is the true value of the company. How to calculate the intrinsic value? I'm going to go into that in the detail in the next few videos, so stay tuned for it. So the third way you can participate in the stock market is through investing into the index. In other words, invest into ETFs. In other words, you're buying the market, okay? For example, the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. And of course, the final way to participate in the stock market is going into options. You can buy a call or buy a put. You can sell a call or a put. Because investing in options is more risky, I wouldn't recommend it to beginner investors. Only when you're more familiar with the stock market, then you go into options. And also only when you have the right options mentor to guide you, then you can go into options. Otherwise, if you have no guidance, no nothing, don't touch this first. So there are two ways that you can make money from the stock market. The first way is through Capital gains. You already know this, you buy a stock, you hope that the value will go up and then you sell the stock and then make a profit from it. In other words, you're investing for growth, okay? You're investing for growth. And then the second way to make money from stocks is through dividends, dividend payments. Now dividends can be calculated in two main ways. Number one is dividends per share or in short, DPS. Okay, the second way is the more common one, dividend yield. Okay, and it's normally calculated in terms of percentage. Now, how do you find out your dividend yield? It's basically taking the amount of payout, all right, divided by your investment amount. Let me give you an example, okay? So let's say the payout is $10, and then the stock is selling at $500 per share. Your dividend yield would be 
2%, which is not very good. Might as well put your money into bonds, right? But that doesn't mean that all the dividend payments for, for all the companies are that low because dividend payments depends on a couple of things. The more stable the company is, the more dividends it pays. Okay? Whereas for high growth companies, companies with high potential for growth, okay, they would generally pay less dividends. Why is this so? It's because in order for a company to grow, it has to invest capital into the business. Yes? Because when companies pay out dividends, they are paying a portion of their earnings to you instead of reinvesting these earnings back into the business. So when companies pay you high dividends, they are compromising on their growth as compared to a company who reinvests their earnings back into the company they would experience higher growth not guaranteed but very likely and as a result they cannot afford to pay you a lot of their earnings so in other words when you invest for dividends your risk appetite is very likely different from somebody who invests for capital gains correct because when you invest for dividends you're investing to stable companies and hence very likely you are a conservative investor or you have a long-term horizon you're investing for retirement whereas if you invest for capital gains you are more aggressive investors compared to somebody who invests for dividends only so normally investors who invest into capital gains they don't really focus a lot on how much dividends the company is paying okay so where do you go and find companies which pay good dividends and also stable, for example, utility companies. But with that said, don't just go and jump into buy any utility company because you gotta make sure you enter the right time. You gotta make sure that you're buying below the intrinsic value. So I'm gonna talk more about that in the future video, so don't worry about that. So of course, the two things that you need to learn before you start, the first thing first is you need to understand a little bit about accounting. Okay, you don't need to be like me, go and learn how to balance a balance sheet. I still remember a couple of my balance sheets, tried balancing it for one whole day, still cannot balance. Not only me, but also for a lot of my classmates. So, you don't need to train yourself to be an accountant. You just need to understand the basic things. What's a net profit? What's a revenue? What's an operating expense? What's a liability? What's an asset? You need to know all that, okay? And of course, the other thing that you need to learn is economics. When you study accounting, you are studying the internal operations of the company. The other thing that you need to study is the big picture. Where is the company operating in? What industry are they operating in? And how does it affect their business? So of course, different investors use different strategies. Some people use the top-down approach, meaning they look at the economic situation of the country, then they go down into the balance sheets, the P&L, Whereas for me, I prefer bottom-up approach, meaning I first look at the financial statements first, and then I'll go and study the industry. So what I'll do is that I'll do comparative analysis. What do I mean by that? It means that you need to compare with companies who are in the same business. For example, if you're looking at the Singapore Shengxiong stock, you need to compare with FairPrice, you need to compare with Cold Storage, which are all also supermarkets. And once I've done that, I will look at the overall big picture. Then I'll apply this model called the pastel model. Meaning, what's the political situation? How does it affect the business? What's the economic situation of a country? In this case, Singapore. If I'm looking at Sengchong stock, what's the societal situation, technological situation, environmental situation, legal? And of course, when I'm studying a company, I also need to look at many other different things other than financial statements. You need to see whether the insiders of the company, are they holding any shares? And also I'll do a quick SWOT analysis and that's also for future videos, okay? So that's why you need to know a little bit about economics but it's not as important as how is the company performing? Now here's the thing, in a really bad economic situation, you can still also find good companies to invest in. Whereas in good economic situation, you can also find bad companies to invest in too. Which is why I prefer the bottom-up approach 
Whereas for forex, I use top-down approach. Whole entire different process altogether. So when you study accounting, you need to understand the three main financial statements, okay? The first one is P&L, profit and loss statement, or some people call it income statement. And the second one is balance sheets. Balance sheets, not balance sheet. When it comes to economics, you need to know the business economics. You also need to know the country economics. If you are a forex trader, you probably know a little bit about this already. But personally, I studied both in university, so I'm gonna share as much as I can to you, okay? So with that, let me know that in the comment section below, why do you want to become a stock investor? Or if you already started, why did you start to invest in stocks? Let me know what you think, and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. So with that, I'm Karen Fu, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.